Bow to the Pharaoh. Welcome to Cinema Recap. Today's ancient adventure is The Pyramid. A sandy movie that is surely cursed. Let's wrap into it. Spoilers ahead. Welcome to Cairo, Egypt of August 2013. Look anywhere you'd like, but don't blame me for it because there's a big fling of chaos all around the streets. Could be Black Friday. It's all pushing daisies because this team of archaeologists and documentarians come across a riot in the city. And they're blocked. Their car's being smacked like an Asian child as they're getting through that city. I guess these are our lovely tour guides. Too bad some dogs barking overshadow the reporter's Sunni's findings. They said they'd need a shotgun. And PETA might have a word with you if we're gonna do that. Later, she tries to interview Dr. Miles Holden, who seems to be an archaeologist familiar with that weird three-sided pyramid of Akhenaten. Who knows? It might be the king's wine cellar. After that, Sunni interviews Nora, another expert in this matter. She says, whatever pyramid this is, it has been buried for thousands of years. And later, Nora gets interviewed by Sunni about satellites and the research advancements they helped with. Welcome to the lab, where the gang tries satellite imagery to have a look at that weird new pyramid via space. Nora suggests entering that pyramid through a tunnel leading to the apex, and then she tries to debunk the connection between aliens and pyramids. Come on. It would have been smooth sailing if it weren't for Nora's dad, Miles, who later fiddles a bit with Nora's computer and sees she has quite the boy toy. He tries to pry in his daughter's lip smacking with some other nitwit, but she tells him to butt out. After a lot of fussing with the interviews, soon he's done with them and Fitz puts away the camera. Different cam guy this time. Michael Zahir has quite the little neat toy and starts spying on Nora using a drone while she dresses and calls her mom via laptop. Probably not a Discord call. Nora tells him to piss off so he annoys some other adventurers. He flexes Shorty, the cute little peeping Tom drone, to some site workers and to the documentation crew. Zaheer says this nifty piece of tech is done by NASA. Must have cost a fortune. Then Nora introduces her boy toy to the rest of the crew as the robotics expert. Zaheer remarks that everything Shorty sees is permanently recorded, so you can bet your sweet cheeks NASA's got the chokehold on Nora's lingerie. Nah, instead you're shooting alien out here, Ripley. The following day, one of the workers says they managed to break through, so they rush to the entrance and... Spill on aisle one. The camera goes bonkers and then Jesus, well, that guy's not looking too good. He collapses with a bit of foam in his mouth. Well, later, at least they say he's alive. He just inhaled some toxic air from the old caves or places, so... No worries. Miles then becomes vigilant. Some hobo comes by, whispers to Miles, and they all run away. I don't get it. Cleopatra's lingerie was found. They're all in a rush. Eh, too bad, it's not lingerie. At the lab, Dr. Miles and his team are being asked to vacate the premises because there might be a civil war going on in Cairo. Sounds like Revenge of the Fallen. Of course, they don't want this, but are given no choice. Miles and Nora argue with each other since they're potentially ditching the find of the century. Nora wants to explore more, but Miles says it's too risky. Of course, she doesn't want to leave empty-handed, so after a few quips here and there, they agree to at least explore the pyramid for only a few hours, and only using the Wally bootleg shorty. Miles eventually succumbs. They pack some stuff for the exploration, but some military man is sent later, and he appears to be a supervisor of some sort. He wants them to get packed up and get ready to leave within the next 24 hours. Of course they will, right after. Shorty busts a groove and shows us the inside of the tunnel. Zaheer says most of the toxic fumes are gone and makes Shorty go further. Zaheer suddenly remarks Short is worth over three million smackers. My yeah, it's a three million dollar rover, yeah, I can Yeah, say hello to poverty if you lose it. They find some deathly hieroglyphics and then obligatory jump scare. The crew gets shocked, but nothing too serious. What was that? Shorty goes in deeper. Then it sounds like some bats ambush the drone. He loses control. Then the gang confirms that Shorty went offline and that Zaheer needs to get it back because... Goodbye, three milli, hello, poverty. It's supposed to be only Miles and Sunni, but they all eventually agree to go there anyway. They prepare, but the military dude spits some facts and he doesn't want anyone going inside that cavern. Then Sahir uses his Egyptian boyish charms to bargain, so that military guy gives him two hours to get back that drone. They set up a perimeter safety wire and then go for the gas masks before they start rolling. The place is nothing but dust, 
dirt and rock as far as the eye can see. They're trekking through the cave and finally stumble upon the tunnel where Shorty is just suddenly gone. And there are tracks. Well, he then finds a piece of it. Foreshadowing, also poverty. Then they find the apex, and everyone climbs on top. They find some weapons, which Miles says that they're ceremonial and are usually next to the sarcophagus. Nora takes a sample of one of the weapons. Then they find out Miles' safety wire is mysteriously snapped. They get into a bit of a blame game before they get out of the apex. I stepped on it. You probably stepped on it. Then they don't know which way they came from, so they get to some logical thinking and guess. They take one direction and eventually find Shorty. Well, a busted up shorty. Then the ground and ceiling start to crackle, so they bide their time and be careful with those steps one at a time. At least until it all comes tumbling down. Breathe in for death, Fitz. <laughs> well, has anyone hurt? The smell's very disgusting in this chamber. What is that smell? Fitz is joking about Zaheer's flatulent tent. Then God has a chuckle and causes the rock to crush Zaheer's leg. They try to push it, but it's too heavy. Nora then finds a shaft, and since she has rock climbing experience, she wants to give it a go. Fitz boosts her up, and so far, so good. <gasps> Nora finds a small sewer-like tunnel, but inside some mutant rat-looking thing attacks her by clawing her face. Then she plummets down. At least Fitz breaks her fall and the two of them are fine. She saw the creature and told the gang it's familiar to the thing that wrecked Shorty. The thing we saw before he lost contact with Shorty. Miles finds a blocked entrance, but reads on the hieroglyphics that they're warnings. Soon he wants to get out through said gate, but Miles doesn't want to destroy an ancient structure. Of course, they all have an argument on it, but Miles comes to his senses when there's no other way out, and they find complete darkness. Before departing, Nora leaves a light for the trapped Zaheer. <laughs> That's what they all say. And there's the goodbye kiss. So the remaining gang walks through the new corridor, and they hear that military man from above. Then they hear cries for help. Nora goes back, and Miles is in hot pursuit, while Suni and Fitz are left behind. Well, they found Zaheer's leg, and just his leg. They follow the blood trail, and it goes up the shaft. Miles comforts the crying Nora and tells her that they gotta focus on getting out. They both reunite with Suni and Fitz, so the other two ask about Zaheer. Miles lies a lot, and Fitz and Suni can tell. Suni goes crazy and plays the blame game. I love the communication that consists of panic and the blame game. They all calm down, agree to find Shadid, the military man, and then Fitz is forced to lead the way through a skinny tunnel. After Fitz crawls through this small opening, they all follow. Then something makes a few noises behind Nora. There's something's behind us! So they pick up the pace. Whatever was chasing him was gaining on him. But suddenly, Shadid comes to save the day. Wielding no trigger discipline and an AK, he lets loose on the Jeepers Creepers after everyone gets out of the shaft. Well, he runs out of ammo, and then a few cat-looking things get out of the tunnel, and it looks like they're running from something. There it is. R.I.P. Shadid the Military Man. Fitz freaks out. Then Miles quickly makes him turn off all the lights and try to remain calm and quiet to avoid detection from whatever killed that guy. After a while, they think it's gone, so the lights go on and Suni's scars are getting infected. She's looking like she's about to turn into a zombie or something. Miles talks about the hieroglyphics on the wall and the ritual of the Egyptians and the Book of the Dead, but Suni tells him they gotta go. In the new cavern, Miles breaks his own rule of not touching anything and results in a sand burial booby trap. They run as fast as they can through that tunnel, but Nora gets stuck, so Miles comes back to help his own daughter. Fitz on the other end runs into Suni and accidentally pushes her off into a spike trap. She's then devoured by skinny hairless cats. It took a while, but Miles manages to pull Nora out of that sand death trap, and they arrive to a horrible sight of Suni getting eaten alive. Miles pulls a rope and Nora follows, and they all rappel down. But I'm thinking if you're gonna remove her from spikes like that, you gotta be sure you patch her up, or isn't she gonna bleed out of those giant gaping holes? Bad news? She then twitches out and dies of shock instead. I mean, the holes on her body were huge. Who's gonna heal from that? Fitz goes in denial and tries to get her off from the spikes, but Miles tells him to just face reality. Come on, she's gone. Nora wants to get out now before they get attacked by something else. Then they find out they all have some marking and another argument. Nora thinks those cat things that attack Suni are cannibalistic sphinx cats that have been living here for a long time. They go into yet a newer cavern and... Welcome back to square one. Population, you guys, and some killer creature stalking you. They start thinking about the tunnels they've been through. Then, Fitz finds Shorty. Fitz comes up with the idea that he could wire his camera up to Shorty's remains and call for help by leaving a message to the outside world. 
Ugh, gross. If that recording would be on YouTube, expect the wrath to fall from Susan. So they get ready to record and review what they need to say. Then Miles gusses up to finally record what could be his final message. I told you, guns are your friends. Bring guns. They feel a sudden breeze and it's coming from the statue. Miles and Nora get frisky and Fitz warns them about it. But he manages to find the right button and overturn the wall filled with skulls. The gang slowly and quietly walks down the chamber with the lights on, only to be welcomed by the stench and remains of the dead. Miles talks about gods and how some of the temples built in the ancient world are for gods. Some of them can be benign. Sadly, whatever they're dealing with isn't so nice. That's the spirit, though there's something on your arm, Fitz. Should put some ointment on that, man. Miles then leads the gang into another room and thinks it might be the bottom of the pyramid since it has all sorts of statues and coffins. They see a few shafts, but they need to find the right one for the exit. Then they find another surprise. That doesn't look like Egyptian royalty. In fact, Nora's thinking that it might be a Freemason and deduces that maybe they made the entrance tunnel. Then Miles finds another clue. Gee, you think? Nora reads it and it says they were trapped in the burial chamber and that they may have found the escape shaft in the burial chamber. Miles agrees, but maybe that guy doesn't agree. <laughs> Fitz pulls Nora and they both run off, but not too far. They could hear a distant roar. Fitz is desperate to get through that skull wall, while Nora is disoriented from whatever she just saw. Fitz finally gets his moment. Woo, looks like his balls just dropped. Fitz is tired of all this crap that's happening. It's not about the shot, Nora. Nora's pleading him not to leave, but he's already tightened that jock strap. My man. And now we're getting paranormal activity with night vision and static here and there. Oh, it's hard not to feel pumped. Fitz, slowly walking in the burial chamber. He eventually finds Miles. And how is he still alive without his beating heart? Then Azazel from Tekken 6 pulls up. Guess that undead mumbo jumbo actually works. The Nasus puts Miles on a weighing scale as he screams for dear life. Then his flesh suddenly melts off. Cue the creature looking behind. Fitz turns back and films the creature walking away. Hey Zeus Christos, better book it, Nora. <laughs> that thing smells tears. It slowly walks and claws the walls to where Nora's hiding and just barely it misses Nora and heads off into the other side shifting wall. Time for show and tell. Kind of obvious that it's 3D rendered, but Nora then figures out that that thing is Anubis and he's hungry for the hearts of the guilty. Anubis is using the ritual in Egyptian Book of the Dead by taking and eating the hearts of the impute. She's thinking there must be a way out of this weighing scale room. There, he got crew cut spare pistol. That's a lucky find. Nora tearfully mourns at her father's lifeless body and then she grabs his flare. Then Nora sees the story of Osiris through the hieroglyphics and think the pyramid is a prison for Anubis. She says that the dogman is trying to rejoin his father Osiris in the afterlife. Then they find some more clues about their star map until they point out the exit shaft. Looks like Crew Cut left another gift because the two just found a rope ladder. They scale it. He's back. Get this back. Go, Nora. You know, if you guys stopped screaming, he wouldn't have found you. Fitz shoots the rushing Anubis one too many times up until he's dragged into falling down with Anubis. Nora quickly takes this chance to climb, but she falls a few feet and surprise. It's Anubis, back again. They have a little tussle, up until Nora defuses him with a flare. And there she finally heads upwards to safety and now to roll credit. Oh, well, we could go with that too. Nora opens her eyes and wakes up to the fact that Anubis tied her down to the center of the weighing scale. Trust me, you don't want to know what happened to Fitz. Anubis takes his time to weigh Nora, so she tries to free herself from the rope with the blade sample she took earlier. Anubis tries to slowly dig into her and rip her heart out, but just in time. Nora makes a break for it, but not before the local felines corner her. Soon it becomes apparent that they're not here for her, but that they're here for good old cat versus dog. Weird they went for that scary looking dog man rather than the vulnerable female. Nora takes the chance to run away, scaling up the rope towards the exit shaft once more, and limps when she finally gets to the top. It's almost the end for this risky field trip. She walks slowly towards an exit where the light is finally shining, but she collapses. Soon she wakes up to a bright light from the end of a tunnel and a little boy walks to her slowly, takes her camera as she begs for him to help. Best ending ever. Let us know in those comments below using that hashtag cinema recap. This was The Pyramid by Fox International Productions. 